Hi, my name is Dale Maley, and today in this video, we're going to talk about two different methods of how to make wooden gears. Now, I have made over 20 wood spur gear types from Red Oak. I made maybe about six sets of mating worm gears and spur gears also. So I have some experience making wood gears primarily from Red Oak. But my original method I've used for a couple years, I've had some issues with that. So on my last project, I decided to see if I could uh, improve my process and reduce some of those issues. So I wanted to share both of these methods with you so you could pick whichever one you like. Or there's probably other variations as well, as there is with most things in woodworking. The process that I use for making wood gears is similar in the beginning, no matter which of the two methods you choose to finish the gear. So here's a rough outline of my process. I'll design the gear and I use a free program called Gear DXF. And what that program does, once you pick the pitch diameter, number of teeth, etc., it outputs a DXF file of the gear shape. I can then import the DXF file into SketchUp, but it won't be the right size, so I always scale that in SketchUp to the correct size, and I use the axle diameter to help do that scaling. Once I've got it to the right scale, I'll print out a paper pattern from SketchUp, and when it's time to apply that pattern to the blank, I'll put white Elmer's glue on it, and then I'll apply the pattern to the blank. I'll cut the teeth with a scroll saw, and then the excess pattern that's left, I'll soak that and remove that paper pattern by scrubbing it with a wet rag. Now here's a screenshot of using the Gear DXF program, just to show you what the program looks like. And then uh, this is where you can export a DXF file of the gear design that you selected. Now here's a photograph of my scroll saw where I have the white paper pattern glued on top of the gear blank and I've scrolled sawed the teeth of the gear and including some fancy patterns on the inside as well. Now here's a description of the first process I developed for making wooden gears. I'm going to call that method one. So I glue that pattern from SketchUp onto the blank. I go to the drill press and drill the axle hole. Then I take it to the scroll saw and I saw out the teeth. Then I uh, dampen with water and scrub off uh, the excess paper pattern and let it dry. And then I'll typically uh, stain and varnish the gear to finish it. So no woodworking process is ever perfect. In this original method that I used, method one, I found some issues with it. Sometimes I would uh, put the gear on its uh, axle shaft and then I would uh, spin the gear on the shaft and I'd have some side to side wobbling of the gear on the axle. And I've traced that back to the fact that my drill press table is not perfectly perpendicular to the spindle with a drill bit in it. And on my drill press I really can't adjust that and I just have to live with it. And uh, for some models, it doesn't make any difference. Uh, other ones, it does. You don't want to have a, a lot of excessive wobble. And I don't know how to fix that problem. The other issue I run into then is the outside diameter of the teeth. If you uh, put it on the axle shaft and then you rotate the gear on the shaft, um, if you would measure the outside of each tooth uh, back to the state of the center, you'll find out that you have some variation in those teeth. And that's caused by you never get the axle drilled exactly in the center of the drill pad of the pattern, paper pattern with your drill press. And of course you got a little bit of error when you do the scroll sawing of the teeth as well. Once you discover the two issues that I just identified, is there anything you can do about them? Well, the side to side wobble from the drill press table being misaligned to the spindle. I don't know anything you can do for that. Um, you could try drilling, uh, enlarging the hole, but then it's going to be sloppier to fit on the axle, so I don't have a good fix for that. The variation in the teeth, you can somewhat fix that. 
uh, take a scrap piece of plywood, um, drill an axle hole in it, and get a short piece of dowel for your axle, and put the gear uh, on the dowel on the plywood and rotate it. If you take that to the uh, drill press and you clamp down the lock the table and you lock the plywood down, if you're very careful you can rotate that gear by hand and you can sand the outside diameter of the teeth. It does fix the outside diameter of the teeth. It does not fit um, the fact you could have differing bottoms of the teeth, but it does pretty much fix the OD. Safety wise you have to be careful here because if you um, press the gear too hard against the drum it wants to take off spinning and uh, your fingers might get in the way so be careful if you're trying to uh, do that operation. Now here's a photograph of where I'm going to take a 9 inch pitch diameter gear, a fairly large size gear, and I'm going to sand the outside diameter of each tooth using a drum sander mounted in the drill press. I've got the metal drill press table locked and then the piece of plywood I've clamped that down so it doesn't move and then I uh, move the wheel in until the uh, matches up with the smallest shortest tooth and then I turn drill press on and then I very carefully uh, turn the gear around uh, sanding each tooth and when you get done if you uh, make a pencil mark at the edge of the teeth on the plywood and then you rotate the gear you should get close to zero run out uh, after you've sanded the teeth. On my last project I did quite a bit of thinking about how could I make a higher quality gear so I came up with what I'm calling method two here. So in method two I take the uh, red oak board blank and I bandsaw it a uh, round circle about a quarter inch larger than the outside of the um, gear teeth. And I take that blank, I mount that on a lathe face plate. I turn the lathe on, I take a pencil, and I try to make a small circle near the center. Doesn't really matter what size, somewhere down in the half an inch diameter type range. Shut the, <coughs> shut the lathe off. Take, take it out, <coughs> then by eye, using that little half inch circle, I take the pencil and mark uh, the exact center of the gear. I'll make a little point there with an awl and take a compass and then I can uh, mark the final outside diameter that I want on the gear. That gives me a pencil line to work to on the lathe. Another way if you have large enough calipers is to use uh, calipers to judge the outside diameter. So put it back in the lathe, turn that outside diameter down to your mark, Take it, uh, while it's still in the lathe, mount a uh, drill bit, uh, use a Forstner bit, in the tail stock of the lathe, and then you feed the tail stock into the rotating chuck, and you actually drill the hole while it's in the lathe. This assures you of getting uh, that center axle hole perpendicular to the uh, gear face. At that point, you take it out of the lathe. You can glue on the pattern. Uh, try to make sure that the outside edges of the teeth around it uh, line up as close as I can get it to the outside of the blank. Then I scroll saw the teeth, and it's basically done except for staining and varnishing. So what issues are there from using method two? The good news is I have not had any side to side wobble like I would get from drilling the axle hole on the drill press. Uh, this is because you actually drilled that hole while it was still in the lathe. Now the OD of the teeth will vary as you rotate the gear on its axle. Why is that? Well you never get the axle OD quite perfect on the lathe and you'll have some error in scroll sawing the teeth also. I recently made three gears with nine inch pitch diameter. It's pretty good sized wood gears. When I measured them all three had less than one eighth of an inch uh, minimum to maximum 
amount on the outside of the teeth. And how I did that, when I had that set up I showed earlier on the drill press, I uh, rotated the gear by hand and then uh, marked on the plywood where the uh, outside edge of the tooth was. And my min to max distance was uh, an eighth of an inch. I took uh, those gears to the uh, drill press again and drum sanded the outside of the teeth. And when I measured them again, I had zero variation as close as I can measure. Now here's a short video of when I made those three large 9 inch gears and I put them on their axles and then I was able to easily ro drive all three with uh, using one finger. Took very little effort as you can see in the video. So if we go back to that chart I made with method 1 and method 2, on method 2 I added on a step at the bottom to sand the outside diam diameter of the teeth and then uh, stain it. So this gives you a nice chart comparison of the two processes. So which of the two methods should you use on your project? Well method 1 is definitely faster takes less hours. Uh, it might be good enough for your application. And then sanding the outside diameter of the teeth helps out quite a bit as well. Now method two makes a higher quality gear but it takes longer. It does seem to eliminate the side to side wobble on the gears and as far as I can tell gives the highest quality gear or higher quality gear than method one. So in summary this short video explains two alternative methods for making wood wooden spur gears. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it helps on some of your projects. And please subscribe. Thanks for watching.